Good morning, Hernandez students. It's Mrs. H, and we are here once again for the, our next edition of IB Advisory. Um, this week, we are going to be discussing IB ATL skills, and this is week 4A, and the slides will be 1 through 17 today. So um, first, we need to talk about what ATL stands for. ATL stands for Approaches to Learning Skills, or in other words, how do you learn? What are those skills that you need in order to make the best of every learning experience that you have? So ask yourself these questions this morning. Um, number one, when the solution to an unfamiliar problem is not known, what do I do to learn? Um, the second one would be, how do I get around obstacles that are in my way? I'm sure each of you have had a class or um, a unit within a class that maybe you didn't understand as much as you wanted to understand, um, or maybe um, it was something that was unfamiliar to you. So in that case, what do you do to get around those obstacles and to learn? Because remember, all learning when you first start is difficult. And then as you learn something, it gets easier and easier. So where do you go during those times to look for answers? All right. So here is a brief um, introduction to what are ATL skills. All right, I really, I like this. Um, number one, because they didn't talk to you. They just um, had pictures to show you 
what ATL skills are. And um, if you noticed, they put them, they likened them unto tools in a toolbox. So if you're going to complete a project, having the right tools are very, very important. Um, if you try to do, say, a woodworking project or you're trying to fix something, um, if you don't have any tools, it makes it very, very difficult to complete that job um, versus having a toolbox that's filled with tools. And so your teachers are going to help you um, throughout the middle years program um, that we have at Hernandez. They're gonna help you to develop those skills, to be able to um, add those skills to your toolbox. So when you come across difficult things in your classes, you'll have those appropriate tools to learn. Um, and so these were the categories that were each of the drawers in the toolbox. We have research skills, social skills, thinking skills, communication skills, and self-management skills. All right. And so the ATL skills, again, are those skills that are going to help anyone to learn. But before you're able to learn, you need to develop an awareness of yourself as a learner. So you have to know those things that um, you already have, those tools that you already have in your toolbox, and then maybe some of those areas in which you struggle so you know when to ask for help. For example, are you able to work well with others but find it difficult to get started when working alone? Do you enjoy research? Are you good at communicating what you found in a way that makes it clear to others? Um, and you may have some areas that you're really strong in and maybe other areas that you'll be able to work on those areas as you're at Hernandez. All right, and then this is a graphic that shows you the five areas of approaches to learning skills. And then underneath, it breaks it down into smaller chunks. And so today, we're just gonna be talking about the large um, categories up here, each drawer. Think of the um, areas underneath as those tools that you're gonna be putting in your drawer to be able to help you become more successful. All right, so category number one is going to be communication skills. And so this is exchanging thoughts, messages, and information. How well can you communicate with others? Um, most of you have probably played this game in elementary school, um, and um, it's known as the telephone game. And so the premise is the teacher whispers a word into the ear of a student on one end of the classroom, and then next that student whispers that same word to the person sitting next to them, and so on. And once it gets to the last person, he or she then tells the class the word that they heard. Um, and if you have played this, um, then you probably know that even if it's a simple world or simple word, like maybe bulldozer, by the time you get to the end, you may get bulldozer or you may get a word that's completely different. Because as you know, when information passes unreliable, unreliably from one to the next, to the next, to the next, it might change. Um, and so what does this tell us um, about the importance of accurate communication? Um, that it, if information just passes from person to person, it may not be accurate. Um, that also might tie into gossip. Um, have you ever heard gossip that's gone around or maybe what started out um, as truth then um, additional information is added to that. And maybe by the time it gets down the line, the gossip probably, and that's when it does become gossip instead of truth, um, because you have those inaccuracies. All right. Category number two is social skills. And so these are those skills that are going to help you work effectively with others. And if you look on this graphic, we have different skills that deal with collaboration. So that means that you're able to work in a group um, and to work successfully in that group. All right, so we're gonna try to solve this riddle. Um, three doctors said that Robert was their brother. Robert said that he had no brothers. So who is lying? Um, anyone know the answer to this one? Have you heard this one before? Um, you may be able to, your teachers may have you, may stop the video and then have you just talk it out with someone, see if you can figure it out. 
doctors don't have to be men. The three doctors are women. Okay. Did any of you come up with that answer to that? And then our follow-up question is, why is it important to be able to work well with others? Um, not only in middle school, but when you get to high school and then you, when you get out um, beyond high school, whether you're doing college or where you're, whether you're doing another job, um, chances are you're going to have to work with others. So how well can you do that? And if you struggle with that, what skills can you um, try to work on so that you'll be better with that? All right, and then here's our second riddle for a challenge. This is our Riddler's Riddle. I can fill a room or just one heart. Others may have me, but I cannot be shared. What am I? Okay, and again, if your teacher wants to, he or she can stop the video and let you talk about this for just a minute. See if you can figure out the riddle. Um, and so if you want to do that, stop it now, but we're going to move on now. The answer is loneliness. Did any of you come up with that answer? And then explain um, how you came up with loneliness. All right, category number three, um, self-management skills. These are those skills that you need to have in order, man in order to organize yourself as a student. Um, you have to be able to manage time and what you have to do effectively. Um, we have effective skills, which means managing your state of mind. Um, if things come up that are difficult, um, how well do you manage your emotions or do you struggle with managing your emotions? And then reflective, um, reconsidering the process of learning. So after you've learned something, can you reflect on the process, what you did well, and maybe what you can improve on? All right, so here is one mindfulness activity that we can do. Um, you're going on a holiday to Hawaii, name 10 articles of clothing you would need to take and what you would need to organize. Okay. And so if you have time, and again, this is up to your teacher, um, if you want to make a list of those things about going on your vacation to Hawaii, um, and maybe how would that change if, say, you were going to Alaska versus Hawaii? What, what or how would those articles of clothing change? And then here's another mindfulness activity. Um, all of us seem to love emojis. So for positive emotions, for the next week, choose two positive emotions that you will feel for each day. What are those two positive emotions that you're going to feel? Then think and discuss, um, and how will you um, talk about the language you'll show for each of your emotions? Okay, so again, as a class, your teacher may have you work on this mindfulness activity. All right, so that's it for today, Bulldogs. Um, we will be back tomorrow where we will discuss categories four and five for ATL skills. So I hope you have a great day and we'll see you back tomorrow.